Hello. In most of my videos, somewhere or other, I ask my viewers if there are any questions they would like to have answered. And one question that's come up a couple of times is about the speed of the tool when you're engraving on glass. What my viewers said to me was that they had looked on the internet for information on what speed they should set their tools to and hadn't found anything. And I had a look as well and I, yes, I could see speed in feed rate tables for CNC engraving and I could see speed, speeds, indicated speeds for uh, rotary engraving on different types of metals, but nothing really for glass. So this video will be about the speed of your rotary tool when, when you're engraving on glass. When we're talking about speed, it's measured in RPM, which is revolutions per minute, which is how many times the tool turns around in a minute. If you happen to have a type of engraver which is a fixed speed, which is not adjustable, this video may not be for you. I'm sure some of the later ones will be much more interesting for you, but this one isn't for you. But many rotary tools do have an adjustable speed. I use just a Dremel 3000, if you fancy. And this one has a little switch on it here, which has settings at 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Now, to know what those settings are, I have to go to my instruction manual here. And what it tells me is that for this model, a setting of 1 to 2 is somewhere between 10 and 14,000 RPM, whereas if I go up to 9 to 10, that's between 28 and 33,000 RPM. So there's quite a range of different speed settings on that one. Your own rotary tool may have different speed settings. The Viewers who asked me, or one of the viewers who asked me to do this video, was telling me that his own tools, I think micromotors, will go up to 40,000 or even 60,000 RPM. And I have been party to a conversation with someone who had a, an air tool he was using for a rotary engraving, which went up to 160,000 RPM. Contrast that with one of the more popular pendant motors produced by Fordham, which I think is advertising a speed, a maximum speed of 18,000 RPM. So they're all very different. Not only that, but whilst this one uses a slider switch with positions that I can set it to to, set, to get the speeds, many tools use a foot pedal to adjust the speed. So the harder you press down on the foot pedal, the faster it goes. Now that's fine, but that means that you never know exactly what speed it's turning at, unless I suppose you're going at your slowest way very fastest, but it's just variable and you know that it's going faster or slower. Now all that's very interesting because what it suggests to me is that the speed of the tool isn't critical to being able to engrave on glass. To demonstrate that, if I take a piece of glass into my workshop, I can engrave it perfectly easily at every setting of my Dremel 3000. And when I look at those lines, there isn't a huge amount to tell between them. I can tell you that if I take a, a, a caliper or something and measure the depth of these tools, then despite the fact that I pressed approximately the same degree on each of them and gave each of them roughly the same amount of time, the, the line at the higher speed setting is very slightly deeper and we're talking 0.2 millimetres, so very slightly deeper than the line that was cut at the lowest speed. And that is the first thing that you need to think about when you're talking about speed. 
because the higher the speed setting of your machine, the quicker the burr will cut. So if you're trying to remove a lot of glass very quickly, a higher speed setting will be good for you. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you might have heard me say, I don't like pressing hard when I'm trying to cut deeply into the glass. I'd rather go slowly with the tool over the surface and let it take its time and cut away the depth of the glass that I want taken, taken out. Uh, there are two reasons for that really. One is that um, pressing hard on your tool is going to wear out the tool and the burr quite a lot more quickly. Very particularly so if you press so hard that you stall it, the motor stops turning, but, but in any case. So additional pressure, pressing down the tool, will wear out your tools more quickly. The other thing is that it, when you're really pressing and applying pressure, there's more chance that it, the tool's going to slip and damage your work. So if I'm trying to cut deeply, I'm going to do two things. Increase this cutting speed, increase the number of RPM that it's working at, so that it cuts more quickly, and give it more time. Move the tool more slowly across the glass. So that's the main circumstance when I'm going to use a higher RPM on the tool. So that's fine about the high setting. Lots of quick cutting, higher speed. But when is a lower speed useful? When I'm trying to cut a, an area, say for a tree trunk, where I'm trying to get this sort of profile into the glass, the usual method I use is going at quite a high speed, take a big burr, and cut out the central section first. And I'll cut that to the depth that I, I want it to be at when it's finished. And then I'll take a slightly smaller burr and I'll cut down either side of that, not so deeply, till I get the width that I want. Now doing that covers the area I want and the middle section then is as deep as I want it to be and then I've got a shallower bit at the sides and that's fine. But inevitably, but using that system, what I end up with, instead of my nice sort of semicircular depression in the glass, I'll end up with a little depression and then a deeper depression and then a little depression at the other side. So what I have to do, I'll remove those ridges between the lines made by the different tools. And I find that the best way to do that is to drop the speed of the tool right down, to have it cutting much more gently and then going gently over those ridges, take them down until what I get is a very smooth depression in the glass in the shape that I want it to be. The other thing I'll do at that point is um, reduce the speed of the water dripping on it. I actually want the water and the slurry from the glass to build up on the surface a little bit because I think that helps to smooth the marks of the machine as well. So. One use for slower speed is to give more control and smoother cutting when you're trying to get a smooth overall finish. So there we go. High speeds for quick cutting and removing a lot of material. Lower speeds for more control. There are a couple of other points to remember about the speed. I've been talking here mainly about using diamond burrs. Now, I have diamond burrs in all sorts of size. That one, for example, has a diameter of around about 16 millimetres. This one, little one, is about 1.4 millimetres. And that, that's not the smallest one I have, but hoping you might be able to see that there is a burr on the end of that. And the size, the diameter of the bar you use can impact on the speed you decide to set your machine. For the simple reason that it impacts on the speed 
with which the diamond is impacting on your glass. If I do some fairly basic maths and calculate the circumference of this, then if that was in my machine spinning at 10,000 RPM, each individual little piece of diamond on the outside of that is going to be cutting across my glass at around about 300 kilometers an hour. For this little one, each individual little piece of diamond on that is cutting across the glass at roughly 26, 27 miles an hour. So with the same number of RPM, 10,000 RPM, the actual speed that's happening at the circumference of this one is 10 times this one. That's just something to be aware of when you're deciding what speed to run your machine at. You may find that with a bigger bar, a lower speed is still going to give you the amount of cutting that you want. The other type of bar I use a lot is a rubber polishing bar. The thing to be aware of with rubber bars is that at higher speeds, they can actually start to generate quite a lot of heat. It is possible to generate so much heat that the glass can craze. And sometimes that might actually be quite a nice effect that you're after, but most of the time it's definitely not. And the other thing, of course, that they're rubber. And if you develop enough heat in it, it will melt and the end of your polishing bit will roll floppy and useless, basically. So for rubber bars, a medium to low speed, a medium to low RPM is probably going to give you a better result than a higher one. The other thing I should mention is I said I was party to a conversation with someone who had a tool that was spinning at 160,000 RPM. In that conversation, he was trying to find out why he was getting little black marks, little black lumps appearing on the surface in the, of the engraving. And the consensus of opinion was that the speed of the machine was so high that that was leading to these black marks, these little bars appearing on the surface of the glass. So the advice to that individual was to turn the speed down. So if you are finding you are struggling and you're not getting the results you're looking for, and you're running at high speed, obviously, and consider turning the speed down on your engraving and see if that helps. I think that's all I can tell you about the speed of the engraving. It's not, as I said, it's not critical to being able to engrave on the glass, but it can affect how the final engraving looks when you're done. As with most things to do with engraving, a little bit of trial and error can help you determine what's the right speed for you. But I wouldn't get too hung up on it. Just remember that higher speeds will lead to quicker cutting. Lower speeds generally give a greater degree of control. As I said earlier, I usually ask if any of the viewers have any questions or if they have any videos that they would like me to make for them. If, that, if you do have anything, then just drop something in the comments and I'll see what I can do for you. One of my viewers has asked me to do a video on copper wheel engraving. Now, I wonder if that might have been a little bit tongue-in-cheek because obviously I don't do copper wheel engraving, I've got a rotary tool. However, I do like a challenge. So I think I'm going to try to cover at least the theory of copper wheel engraving in the next video and possibly whether some of the principles and the ideas behind copper wheel engraving can be adapted and used with a rotary tool. I have no idea how that's going to turn out. It might be a little bit more light-hearted and less education. We'll see. But if you'd like to see it, then subscribe, click the notify button, or just watch out for it coming out. It hopefully won't be that long. But thank you anyway for watching this video and I hope it's been useful to you.